swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the first truth of the God. I do. Alyssa Bustamante was a very, very bad girl. She was just 15 years old when she murdered her nine-year-old neighbor because she thought it would be, quote, amazing to try and a fun thrill. Though she was her only victim, it was uncovered that she had dug up multiple graves, which police suspected were for her younger brothers. What a terrible big sister. Hi, I'm Shelly. Follow me down the dark alley and I'll tell you about mean kids that should be grounded. Grounded into hamburger meat. In the cursed town of St. Martins, Missouri, a sinister event unfolded. On October 21, 2009, in the evening, nine-year-old Elizabeth Olton was walking home from her friend's house down the street. Even though it was just a few houses away, she never returned home, and her family frantically began looking for her when it became dark. Elizabeth was never seen alive again. Police searched for the little girl, including the area where her body would eventually be found, but they found no trace of her. Panic spread like wildfire through the community as search parties scoured the area for any sign of the missing girl. But little did they know, this was just the beginning of a hauntingly terrifying nightmare. Alyssa Bustamante was just 15 years old at the time, was quickly identified as the prime suspect. Authorities learned that she and Elizabeth had attended the same school, and the two knew each other. But she wasn't a good friend. Asa suspect in the disappearance, the horrible truth began to unravel. During the investigation, law enforcement discovered Alyssa's diary, which revealed her sinister intentions in terrifying detail. In chilling and graphic entries, she documented her urge to kill and her excitement at the prospect of taking a life. The diary not only served as a written confession, but also provided insight into Alyssa's deeply troubled mind. Alyssa, seeing that she finally had the opportunity to kill somebody, took it. On the night Elizabeth went missing, Alyssa lured Elizabeth Olton on her walk home and took her to the woods, where she beat her, strangled her, and finally, she stabbed her and slit her throat and her wrists. That's not a nice friend. She then dumped her body into one of the graves she had dug the week before in a nearby wooded area. On the surface, Alyssa Bustamante seemed like just an ordinary teenager, but she had a dark secret. Between the cursed pages of her diary, Alyssa had chronicled her fascination with death, her wicked desires, and the thrill she got from the mere thought of ending a life. The pages of her diary even scare me. But behind her evil intentions, Alyssa had a sad history. Alyssa's upbringing was cloaked in darkness, with neglect and mental instability. Alyssa was a cutter. She had attempted suicide numerous times, and she was on medication for depression. It was as if her path was predetermined by the sinister forces lurking within. The courtroom drama was no ordinary show. She appeared in court on November 17, 2009, where the judge ruled that she should be tried as an adult. Despite her confession to the crime, as well as having led the police to Elizabeth's body, she entered a plea of not guilty for killing little Elizabeth. Alyssa Bustamante's defense attorneys said in court that an abundance of the drug Prozac could have been a catalyst to the young girl's behavior. Prosecutor Mark Richardson noted the FDA had not determined that Prozac could cause people to kill. After several delays in the trial, she was finally set to face the murder charges in 2012. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth of the gun. I do. 
Alyssa pleaded guilty to the charge of second-degree murder and armed criminal action. Basically, the main reason for accepting the offer was to avoid the absolute certainty of life without parole. If there was another option, then there would have been no reason to have accepted that offer. By pleading guilty to the lesser charges, she avoided a trial and the possibility of spending her life in adult prison with no chance of release. The line between innocence and guilt blurred as Alyssa faced judgment as an adult. The world questioned whether the soul of a child so young could truly be tainted by such malevolence. Alyssa gave a final statement before the judge handed down her sentence. She said, if I could give my life to bring her back, I would. I just want to say I'm sorry for what happened. I'm so sorry. When the verdict finally came, Alyssa's fate was sealed. She was a bad girl. She was sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole. And that's why you shouldn't do mean things. Do you want even more stories about bad kids? Just like and subscribe to follow me down the dark alley. I'll be waiting for you.